What do these images have in common? I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, I'm not waiting that long. If you said they're overgrown or their buildings, or if you even mentioned the color green, well, you're wrong. The answer was obviously that the talented architects who designed these buildings knew how to use Ivy Gen. Ivy Gen is inbuilt into Blender, and it's a type of generator for Ivy. In 3D, generators automate the process of modeling something, often something that can be really tedious to do yourself. They can come in the form of add-ons or separate software such as Embergen, which I can not afford. Whoa. But Ivy Gen is so great that it's just in Blender by default. To enable it, we're finally introduced to Blender's version of the satanic ritual. <gasps> Edit preferences, add-ons, Ivy Gen, tick the box. Ivy Gen's settings will appear in the Create tab on the side of the viewport. If you click the Add New Ivy button, it's uh, pretty pathetic, but the magic happens once you add it onto an object. Ivy generates from the 3D cursor, so if you shift and right click to change its position and put it somewhere else on the model, you can add some more complexity to the layers. And once you continue playing with settings, you'll quickly realize the newfound power you now hold. As far as simple texturing goes, the add-on makes it really easy because the UV maps are already unwrapped really nicely. This means you can just dump a leaf texture on it and it sorts itself out without any trouble. If you plug an alpha map of the same leaf into the alpha socket of the BSDF, you can get an actual leaf shape. Now, to get these textures, you can either go roaming around the web finding some stupid watermarked internet leaves, or we can go foraging once you've got your leaf, you want to put it on a white background. Using a piece of paper is probably the best option for this, but any white surface will do. Once you've taken the photo, you want to put the image into a new material. If you preview the texture using the node wrangle add-on, which I mean, you just should know about by now, I mean, come on, Manica, come on. The UV mapping won't be perfect. To fix this, go to the UV editing tab and just readjust it. Make sure it's angled the right way and you should be fine. It's also a good idea to make sure that the leaf is as big as possible without clipping through the edges. Going back to the shading tab, put the image into a color ramp and then clamp the values. Since this is going to be the alpha map for the leaf, uh, where it's black is going to be transparent and white will be solid. So we actually want this the other way around. There's a great feature on the color ramp where you can just flip the values, um, so I've done that just to fix that issue. Once you've refined the clamping a little bit more, you can get some really cool results. But it can be better. If you took a bad photo of the ivy or just didn't come out that great, uh, one, you're bad, sorry. Two, hue saturation color node. Woo. This node just allows you to tweak some color settings, which can be really useful if you just want it a bit greener or a bit darker or something. Taking this a step further, we can add a geometry node with the random per island output. This gives each leaf a value between 0 and 1. Putting that output into the hue socket will make the colors go crazy. But we can refine this by adding a color ramp here. And since the default value of the hue slider is 0.5, if we make both the values on the color ramp also 0.5, we can adjust one of them and then we get some nice variation. Putting one of the values slightly lower gets you a kind of red tint. And this is giving some garish hues of British summertime vibes. <laughs> what? <laughs> this system really starts to shine when you add it onto a more complex model. Ivy Gen does a really good job at adapting to a mesh surface, no matter how complicated it might be. Another thing to mention is Ivy Gen will always generate without a material. So just add on the one you've already made. Uh, you also have to redo the UVs, so again, just do it. Stop complaining. Please. I'll always recommend experimenting with the settings yourself, but IV length is one that I find really useful for like these really big meshes, um, just because you can really make it generate up the model, and that's really useful most of the time. Although the results can be interesting, Raising these numbers to the roof isn't always the most fun thing you can do. It can get really slow and annoying while generating lots of ivy, and when it actually generates it, your scene might slow down a bit, slash a lot, slash oh no, oh, oh, oh no. To stop computer having bad time, just don't overdo it. Know your computer's limits. If you need more ivy generated, you can get creative. You can generate smaller patches of ivy on top of other ones, or just try to instance them, which is, oh, do you not shifty and move them somewhere else on the model? A lot of the time it's good to keep IV mount low because um, minimalism it is good. But to properly optimize your scene, you want to take a look at the root of the problem. <laughs> Wait, those are totally vines, aren't they? 
you want to take a look at the vine of the problem. It doesn't work. You know what? It doesn't work. Ivy Gen just does not hold back when it comes to generating these things. I mean, this is crazy. You can't even see it half the time. And because they're so dense, they can really take a toll on your scene. So the easiest way of dealing with this stuff is just to delete it. Or I mean, deleting parts of it. So edit mode. I like using the circle select for this stuff, and then just delete the parts that aren't visible, slash you don't need. Sometimes when deleting points on a curve, it'll get a bit funky because uh, curves kind of hate you, and that's a, that's a fact. Depending on the scene, it might not make a difference, but if it does really affect your shot, just convert the curves to a mesh, and then the same process as before. This way you won't get any weird connections between the curves. But also, if you have a lot of ivy covering your mesh, you can just delete the vines completely. I mean, they don't matter that much. So I'll admit the results on this model aren't amazing, but using Ivy Gen here or there is extremely useful. It is instant detail with largely no repercussions, and something I would definitely recommend to consider putting into your own workflows. So generate to your heart's content, but be responsible. And Ivy, see you later. Uh, I am not releasing this video.